Hello, everybody. It's been a long time since I've addressed you on my video blog. Unfortunately, over the last two years, I've had a uh, long-term COVID. And this is my first attempt to get back in touch with you all. Uh, for two years, I haven't been able to read or write uh, because of uh, COVID fog. But I've been making slow progress, and it's time for me to get my wisdom to you all. And today it's time for the Democratic Party to get its shit together. Or we are going to place our democracy at threat. We're going to place everything that we hold as value at threat in these next elections. Any of you who thinks that we're out of danger of losing our democracy are delusional. I hate to put it so strongly, but that's just a fact. We are in perhaps the biggest crisis in our country since the Civil War. Now, I know there's a lot of disappointed people out there, Democrats out there, uh, but there's one other thing you have to realize about the situation uh, besides the danger that we're in. We do not have the votes in the Congress of the United States. You can have a wish list a mile long. You can list could be pure as the driven snow, but quite honestly, we do not have the votes to pass energetic legislation in this session of Congress. Uh, we can talk all we want about Senator Manchin. We can talk all we want about Kristen Sir, uh, uh, the Senator from Arizona. But the fact of the matter is, we're lucky that they're there because if they get angry and leave our party, we will have Mitch McConnell back in the seat of power, stopping everything that we can possibly think of. And we have a Supreme Court appointment coming up. So don't get angry because we don't have the votes. Electing Biden was just the first step. We must increase our margins in the Congress of the United States in this next election. Now, I know everyone says that's not going to happen. But the stakes are so high that if we collectively, like we did with Joe Biden, put our mind to it, I believe we can accomplish anything. But it's up to you. It's up to you. Now, we've had one big victory, the infrastructure bill. And that's a huge victory, and we should not underestimate it. We're pouring millions upon millions into cities and states across the country putting people back to work, and also correcting some racist infrastructure projects that were built in the past to separate the races. That's a huge progress. And we're very fortunate to have Secretary Pete Buttigieg oversee it. It's going well, projects are starting, unions are happy. So that was an important first step. And let's not underestimate the power of that reach down to the local level. However, the Build Back Better program was a mistake. Not because anything in the bill, but because we lumped it all together. Everybody had to have their thing in that bill. I'm somewhat guilty of that too. I couldn't imagine a bill without X or Y or Z. But Build Back Better is a slogan. And it doesn't describe to the voters of America what's in it. And as a result, what it came down to to the debate was how much did it cost, what was included and what wasn't. And the average voter really has no idea how wonderful that bill was for America and their livelihood and their children and their future. Uh, and we enabled the Republicans to kill it. And we have enabled the Republicans to make it about money and Joe Biden. So here's what we have to do. It, we can, it, and, and I hope you're listening, Senator Schumer. We have to play tough and we have to get rough. And what we have to do is take each item in that bill, child care, tax credit for children, health care, Medicare, uh, community college, going away with student uh, debt, 
uh, all the things that the American people deeply care about, deeply care about, and separate it from the bill, make it a campaign if we want, build better campaign. But I think in the Senate of the United States, because we know Nancy can deliver in the House, every week we should take a part of that bill and have it voted upon. Now, we're going to get very few of them passed. I understand that. But that's OK as long as we can force the Republican Party to time and time again vote against the interest of the American people. For example, uh, insulin, $750 in this country, $40 in any other country. Submit a bill, price cap it. Have every Republican vote against it. Environment. Veterans benefits. Each week have one or two come up for a separate vote. Force a vote or force them to stop a vote. And then in the fall, you can run and say, this man voted against child tax credit. This man voted to, uh, for dirty air. This person voted to keep your insulin at 750 when we tried to lower it to $40. That they understand. That's what we have to do. And we have to get them on the record on voting rights and student loans and insulin and healthcare and education so that we can point out the differences dramatically between us and them. So let's get them on the record and let's give our Democratic candidates this fall ammunition to go at those Republican candidates tooth and nail. So we also got to organize, you know? We just think that we can elect Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. It's up to us. It's our country that's at stake. It's our democracy. Stop wringing your hands and telling people what they're not doing enough of and making silly, at times, woke demands that is not something that the voters want to hear right now. It's OK as an educational program. But don't try to make a policy and legislation, or you'll kill us. That's just a fact. I'm going to say it. It is a fact. That's what they'll grab a hold of instead of our work for a better, healthier, safer America. Now. We have to understand that the last two years has been a real trauma. Trust me, I know my last two years have been living hell. And I've lost 15 people in my life that I value. America has gone through a trauma. Do not underestimate the impact of this pandemic on the psychic of the American voter. They don't know what the rules are anymore. Do they work for home? Can they work for home? They enjoyed it. Uh, can they dress up or do they have to dress up uh, to go to the office? People are disoriented. They're trying to figure out what the new rules are. Uh, we can't get back to normal. We can't get back to doing things the way we did. We can create a new normal, one that's healthy and vibrant and protects us all. Uh, you know, and we must not back off on vaccines and other issues that are important to life and death. But we must understand the fear that's out there and how easily it's tapped into. And also the anger. You know, there's nothing worse than seeing a person that you love die, not be able to be by their bedside, not being able to have a funeral, and there's no closure. It is astoundingly hard. And that's going to create a lot of anger. We have to take that anger and reassure them of what's ahead is the, uh, a society that can meet these pandemics, meet the new normal and establishing guidelines and rules that will enable us to flourish as a nation. Now, we are terrible at organizing. The Democratic Party with the unions and all of the uh, constituencies used to be the best at constituency building and uh, precinct work of any party in history. But we've gotten lazy. Now, it's not like we don't know how to do it because Stacey Abrams brilliantly 
brilliantly showed us how to organize our party in each state. And if you look what that woman has done as a miracle in Georgia, and look next door to Florida at how little organizing we've done. Beto O'Work is organizing Texas. It's all got to come from us. No one's going to hand it to us. And they are organizing at the local level, running for Secretary of State, running for Attorney General, saying our democracy it doesn't work and to take it away from us. So this fall, it's up to you and me. There's no other person that counts more than you becoming more involved, giving more, calling voters, and let's keep the message simple. They have enough on their mind right now. Economically, the war possibly pending in Ukraine and the residue of the pandemic. So we've got to keep it simple. We got to get to work, but it's time to get our shit together, folks. It's good to be back. And thank you if I missed something in this or slurred a little bit, be patient with me because I intend to do one of these every week. Peace to you. I love you.